Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to introduce the concept of multiplication and division as how we're going to use it in geometry. Now, as you know, with multiplication, it's like adding the same thing over and over and over again. So doubling or tripling or quadrupling is multiplying by two or three or four. And division in kind of this, in a similar manner, we're taking something that's large, and again, we're, we're cutting it into half, or into three equal parts, or four equal parts, or five equal parts. The key here being equal parts. So, multiplication and division is going to be splitting things up, but in an even manner, and having, well, like multiples or like divisions. Okay? And much like addition and subtraction, multiplication, when we multiply, we're generally are going from something small to something big. And when we divide, we're taking something big and we're cutting it up into smaller pieces. So to division, we'll be going from something big to small. So as we'll see in proof, if segments or angles are congruent, then they're like multiples are congruent. We call this multiplication. We're going from something small to something bigger. And I have sample problem three here on the screen. We'll do a sample problem at the end of this uh, that uses multiplication. And then division, if segments or angles are congruent, then they're like divisions are congruent. And the reason you'll use in proof is simply division. And we'll do a sample problem with that in just a few minutes. But here are some really helpful hints for multiplication and division that will help you differentiate it from addition and subtraction. So with multiplication and division, one thing you want to look for is double use of words like midpoint, bisector, or trisector in the givens. Okay, so if, we, if we're midpointing two different things, or bisecting two different angles, or trisecting two different segments, so you're going to have double use of midpoint bisector or trisector, think this might be a multiplication or division problem. And along with that, so if there is double use of those things, if you see that you're going from something that's small and you're trying to prove something bigger, you're going from small to big, your givens are small, what you're trying to prove is big, okay? So your givens are small and what you're trying to conclude is bigger, you want to think multiplication, okay? Not subtract, not addition, but multiplication because we've got this double, we're going to be doubling or tripling something. And of course, when you're going from something bigger to something small, so your givens are big, and what we're trying to conclude is small, and again, we're going to be splitting something up into equal parts or multiple things into equal parts, okay? It's not subtraction, but it's division because of the double U. So now let's take a look at some sample problems. Okay, so let's take a look at our diagram here. We are given that MK is congruent to FG. So I'm going to mark that on my diagram. MK is congruent to FG. And we want to prove that MJ is congruent to FH. So we want to prove that that segment and that segment are congruent. So we are going from small to big here. So we should be thinking at least addition for sure. But we're also given that KG bisects MJ and FH. So KG bisects MJ and FH. So as a result of the bisector, we know that KJ is congruent going to be congruent to MK, and we know that GH is going to be congruent to FG, okay? 
but I've got a double bisector here. We're bisecting two things, okay? So we've got ourselves a double bisector. So we're going from small to big. We've got a double bisector. We should be thinking multiplication here, and we are. And the nice thing about multiplication and division, we let you skip writing out the definition of a bisector. You don't have to say now that KJ is congruent to MK because a bisector divides a segment into two congruent segments. And you don't have to say GH is congruent to FG because a bisector divides a segment into two congruent segments. We have taken these two small things and we've created like multiples. So we let our double bisector do the work for us and we can jump right to our conclusion now that MJ is congruent to FH by multiplication. Okay? So when you're doing multiplying and dividing, you don't have to write out the definitions for bisector and trisector and that kind of stuff. Um, that's going to be implied and we're going to let multiplication and division do the work for us. So let's take a look at another sample problem. We're given that angle TRY is congruent to angle ABE. Well, TRY, that's that whole big angle, and ABE is that whole big angle. So we've got a big angle, and we're trying to prove TRW is congruent to CBD. That one. We want to prove those two congruent. Well, we're going from big to small. And here we have our double trisector. We're trisecting TRY and we're trisecting ABE. So when we trisect TRY, of course we know that all these angles are congruent. And when we trisect ABE, of course we know all those angles are congruent. But we were told that these big angles were congruent. So we're splitting both of the same thing into three equal parts. We've got our double trisector here. Okay, so we're double trisecting two of these big things that are already the same. So that must mean all the remaining pieces must be the same. So now all six of these are the same by division. These two big angles, their like divisions are congruent. So we can just go ahead and say angle TRW is congruent to angle CBD by division. And just like when we did multiplication, we don't have to write out our definition of a trisector. We don't have to say that TRW and angle WRX and angle XRY are congruent because a trisector divides an angle into two congruent angles. We can skip that part. So we let division do the work for us. So we'll do this more, and we'll practice this when I see you in class.